Okay, how you doing? We're going to talk about very quickly how is it that I can solve a system using another method called the uh, method of linear combination or it's also called elimination and a lot of people use the term elimination because we need to do exactly what it says and the goal here is to eliminate from both of these equations one of the variables and the way we talk about elimination here and uh, combining things uh, linearly is through additions or subtractions. So, what I'm going to look to do here is, is can I combine the x's in this equation together to make 0? Because 0 is a multiplier that eliminates the x variable. And can I combine the, the uh, y's, or, not and, or could I combine the y's to make them uh, into a coefficient of 0, which makes the y disappear? So what we have here is what I want to take a look at is I'm going to look at my sets here. So I'm going to look at my, uh, my variables here, and I'm going to look at, okay, what are their coefficients? Are they 5 and 3? Looking at the coefficients of the y's, they're 8 and 4, and then I've got my constants over here. So before I start this problem, I want to talk about uh, some common information of how the problem has to look when it starts. And the most important thing here is that both equations okay, must be in ax plus by equals c form, which is standard form, okay, where a, b, and c cannot be fractions. And it's not that they can't be, it's just, it would just make it 10 times harder if they were fractions. So the general goal here is to actually go through the property of clearing the fractions from the problem, make sure that they're all whole numbers, and once they're all whole numbers, it just makes the problem a little bit easier. So in this problem, we just want it to be in some form of ax plus by equals c, where in standard form, the a actually couldn't be negative in true standard form, but for us, I, it doesn't matter if the leading coefficient of the x term would be negative. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can do this problem and uh, some ideas and thoughts behind it. So the goal here is to have it so that when I take this x and add this x to it or subtract it, it makes 0. And right now if we look at it, if I took 5 plus 3, it would make 8, which isn't 0. Or if I took 5 minus 3, it would make 2. So that wouldn't work. So just as it is, it doesn't work. Well, let's look at the y's now. Negative 8 plus negative 4 is negative 12. So negative 12 is not 0. That doesn't work. So let's try the opposite. What is negative 8 minus negative 4? Well, negative 8 minus negative 4 is like adding, so you get negative 4. So it's still not 0. So the coefficient when I combine them still didn't make 0. So the goal here is, is that I need to make it so that their coefficients are opposites of each other, or they could be the same. If they're the same, we do subtraction. If they're opposites, we add. I prefer to always make one of them positive and one of them negative. And the way I look at this is I go through, and all you're going to look for is what is the LCM of your terms. So if I came up here to this problem, and I said, okay, what is the LCM of my x's? Okay, so I have 5 and 3. Well, the LCM of my x's, okay, in this case, is 15. So what I want to do here is I want to attempt to turn the problem into and rearrange and, and change the problem into being able to write one of these as the LCM, of, as both as their LCM. When I take a look at the Y's, I want to see, okay, maybe I can use these as opposed. Maybe it's just a smaller LCM, or maybe one of them is the LCM. And the goal is, is if I ever find one that is the LCM, which is the least common multiple of the two numbers, then that's the one I'm going to use, because then it's less manipulations of my equations. So if I take a look at this one, and in this particular problem, I am going to use the Y's, and I'll tell you why. The LCM of 5 and 3 is 15. Well, there is not a 15 in this problem. So that means I'm going to have to manipulate this 5 and this 3. And when I manipulate, when I manipulate <laughs> this 5, I have to manipulate all of, its all of its other terms in the equation. And the same thing with this. If I manipulate the 3 and change it into something, I have to change all the others. So that means I have to do a bunch more manipulations. But if I come to over here and I look at the Y's, and I go, okay... I have 8 and 4. Well, the LCM of 8 and 4 is 8. And if you notice up here, I have an 8 in my problem. So that makes it a lot easier for me to do. Because then I only have to worry about changing this 4 into that 8. And when I change that 4 into 8, remember, okay, I must change everything else in the problem. And the other thing that I like to do is I like to make them opposites right off the bat. I like to make sure that one's positive, one's negative. And remember, the only way that you can actually change the sign of an of equation once it's on the paper is to actually show some sort of mathematical operation that will change it. You can't just go, oh, let's just make it positive now and all, everything's all hunky-dory. So what I have to do here is if I want to change that negative, well, the only way to change a negative into a positive is to multiply it by another negative. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this, this entire system to make sure that both y's have an 8 in front of it, because that was the LCM. So the first problem, I don't have to do anything with. That becomes 5x minus 8y equals 23. It's already an 8. But the second problem down here, I have to manipulate this 4 and turn it into a positive 8. So what I want to do here is I want to multiply this entire equation by negative 2. And when I do that, it changes every single term in the equation. So negative 2 times 6 makes this a negative 6x. So I'm changing the equation. So negative 2 times negative 4 makes a positive 8y. And that equals negative 2 times 13. Remember, you've got to change every single term. Makes it a negative 26. And the nice thing about this entire problem here is that now when I go ahead, I've now got this new system here. And the new system is 5x minus 8y equals 23, and negative 6x plus 8y equals negative 26. So now what I can do is this idea of linear combination, where I go, okay, what does 5 and negative 6 make? And because I made them opposites, I'm just going to do the adding. So this is why I like to do the opposites, because now it's just, hey, what do these two terms together make? I don't have to worry about doing this idea of subtraction. So now I have, well, 5 and negative 6 make negative 1x. Negative 8 and positive 8, goodbye, not in my problem anymore. So now I've done this idea of elimination. I've eliminated one of the variables from my system. That is then going to be equal to 23 minus 26, which is negative 3. So now, simple little Algebra 1 problem. How do I solve this? Divide by negative 1. Divide by negative 1, you get x equals 3. So now that I have x equals 3 here, remember that I have to, for a system, come up with the coordinate pair, because I'm looking for where do these two lines cross, and then where our lines cross is at a very specific coordinate pair. So that's what I'm trying to find. So just because I found x doesn't mean I'm done. I need to go back and plug this into one of the original problems. You can choose one of these. It doesn't matter what equation you choose. You just need to plug it back in. So I'm going to choose the second one here, this 3x minus 4y equals 13. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'd rather multiply by 3 than multiply by 5. That's just my personal preference. You can do either one. doesn't matter. So I come back here, I plug it in. So now I've got 3 times what the x was was 3 minus 4y equals 13. And I just go ahead and solve it. So 3 times 3 is 9. So 9 minus 4y equals 13. Minus 9 from both sides to get this 9 out of there. Don't forget this negative here. I get negative 4y. Not a 13 minus 9 is 4. And the last thing I need to do here is divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4, and you get y equals negative 1. So what I have here for a final answer, okay, because this is a system and what we're trying to find is the coordinate where they intersect, is that my final answer to this one is going to be 3 negative 1. And that's the coordinate pair where my 2 intersect. So this is my answer here. So there's the coordinate pair. And that's how we do these problems by elimination. So I hope that helps with whatever you're uh, doing for your studies. Um, you could have done this using substitution. Don't forget that. But I just prefer to use linear combination on this one because if I solve for y or I solve for x, rather these writing them as a function of their other variable, I'm going to get a bunch of fractions that I don't want to have to deal with. So this way allows me to still do the problem without the fractions.